Hello, my name is Anamika Kishirwani and I'm a partner database essay here at AWS, where my focus is NoSQL databases. This is the first nugget under cost optimization as there are multiple ways you can cost optimize your DynamoDB table. In this short video, I'll discuss the standard IA table class, which was launched in December 2021. It will be uh, an introduction to standard IA table class, how to enable standard IA table class, and there will be sample two calculations that will help you to understand how this can help you to save dollars when it comes to optimizing your cost with DynamoDB. Now in this entire video, I'll be using standard IA as a shorthand for standard infrequent access table class. Amazon DynamoDB standard IA table class helps you to reduce your DynamoDB storage cost by 60% for tables that store infrequently accessed data. The DynamoDB standard IA table class is ideal for the use cases that require long-term storage of data that is infrequently accessed. For example, application log, old social media post, e-commerce order history, or past gaming achievements. You can read more on this with the help of a blog. You can see the QR code and the link below and under the options. Now, considering the US is one region, the standard table storage cost is $0.25 per GB per month, whereas for standard IA, the storage cost is $1.10 per GB per month. So this is 60% less cost for the standard IA class. This is the same for provision capacity mode uh, or on on-demand mode. Now, when it comes to switching between the DynamoDB standard and DynamoDB standard IA table class, this switch will be very simple and it will have no impact on table performance, durability, availability, even without changing a single line of application code. It is just one click to do it from the console and you can also do it with the help of CLI or an API call. Now let's quickly see how you can change the table class under the management console. So this is the DynamoDB dashboard, right? Um, you can click on tables. I have created a table name cost top table. Once I click on that, under overview, you can definitely see uh, additional info. You can click on that and you can see the table class DynamoDB standard. So this is the table class of this DynamoDB table. Now in order to change this, you can just click on actions, click on update table class. It will give you an option of standard IE. Just click on that and save changes. Once you do that, go ahead and refresh your table. And then if you again go and ch check the additional info, the table class will be changed to DynamoDB standard IE. It's this simple to change the DynamoDB uh, class. One thing to note is that the throughput costs are higher by 20% for standard IA in comparison to standard table class. Hence, the journal guideline is to switch from standard to standard IA table class when the storage cost of using standard table is approximately 50% or more of the overly monthly cost of the table. So look for the tables where the cost is highly storage driven, which means the table is actually expensive from a storage perspective. Now let's look at some examples to get some better clarity on how this can help you to save some money. So in this first example, we have considered the use case of media related customers involving time series data that gets frequently accessed during the first months of its creation and is less frequently accessed over time. So if you see, we are starting with one table with 1000 WCUs and 1000 RCUs and then every month a new table is added and the previous table will have lesser WCUs and RCUs. So the previous table will have one WCU and 100 RCU because there will not be any types, but there will be some read activity which might happen. Then going further into the year for any tables older than two months. The WCU is one and the RCU is also one as there will be no activity or a very less activity for the older data. So let's look into the storage cost. The first one, if you see, there are two columns. There is first cost, which is with respect to considering standard IA for all the for the previous months. And this is the storage cost considering standard class for all the months, right? So the, if you see the first table on the January side, 
the current month uh, the storage cost is 2020 because the current month table is always going to be standard class whereas the previous month is zero because what we are doing is we are starting with january month this is a new workload we have started saving the data starting january to basically make it easy for the calculation and that is how we are going further into february the current month is still under standard uh, standard class and the previous month has changed to standard IA for the first calculation. And then we are keeping the standard class for the uh, for the uh, previous month to see the cost difference. And that's how we are calculating the cost. And if you want to see the total cost when it comes to considering standard IA for previous months, it's 768. Whereas if you would have kept the standard class for all the months, the cost would have been 1548. So this is a huge difference. Now we all know that the cost is not just on the storage side. We have done some throughput calculation as well. So considering uh, the throughput for the um, uh, tables where your um, table is changed into standard IA. So this is the cost for every other month. And this is a cumulative cost where we are just adding up all the cost for the previous months going forward in the year. And hence this throughput cost with standard IA is this much. In order to get a better comparison, we have also created a throughput calculation for all the months, whether all the tables are on standard class. So the throughput calculation, if you see it's this much, right? In order to see the total cost, this is the cost for the table when we are considering standard IA, which is 9,023. Whereas the yearly cost considering standard for all the months, this 9782. So the total save when we you have switched from standard class to standard I, it's 800, approximately 800. So this is how you can see that the standard I is helping you with the cost. Now let's look at the second example. This is one of our strategic customers approximated throughput and storage data, which will show you how they use standard I to reduce the cost which has global replication cost, cost also included. Their global footprint was across four regions, with one region having most reads and writes. Global table costs are with respect to replicated WCUs and storage in other regions. Hence, this is a straight up cost where no optimization can be made. They wanted to see if we could help them to save some money in any way. We started looking into standard IA. Now in global tables, changing the class against one table will change the class against all the replicas. Hence, when they change the class of the table, they were able to save thousands of dollars per month. Under the scenarios, if the region are just created for disaster recovery, sitting in a standby mode, where all those replica tables are just incurring storage and WCUs, looking at the base table throughput requirements, you can try to change the replica regions to standard I class to see if this can cost optimize your time we spend. Now let's look into an example with the help of AWS calculator and then with the respect to Excel to see how much savings we can do with just standard IA class table. So with this example, you can see this is an AWS calculator. I'm considering a US East one region. And in this case, the table class is standard. The store, data storage is 24 TB with this average item size is 212 bytes. But the rights, what we have done is we have taken the baseline of 2600 per seconds with 4300 per seconds as peak for 24 hours. And we are not considering any reserve capacity. Uh, this has been done because in case of standard IA, reserve capacity is not supported. So we wanted to do a proper comparison and hence the reserve capacity is kept at zero. Now the read settings, what we have done is we are using eventually consistent reads. And the baseline is at 18,000 with a peak of 24,000 for approximately 15 days per month, which is coming out to be 336. And again, the reserve capacity for the reads are zero. Looking at the calculation, you can see the storage cost is 6144 with the write cost is 1200 and the read cost is 998, coming out to be $8,400 per month. Now, when we change this to a uh, standard IA class, you can see the cost has reduced from 8,000 to 5,000 approximately. So this is a huge saving. Now, but with respect to global tables, we need to consider the replicas cost as well. 
Hence, let's look into an Excel sheet to basically look into the cost calculations considering the global table replicas as well. So this is a very simple example and calculation which I have considered. The base region is 8400 with the standard IA under 5200, which is saw that under AWS calculator. But here we have replicas cost as well. So there are three more replicas and we are considering the cost of write with respect to the same writes happening for the base region. Whereas the reads are different, so you can see it's 18,000 and 24,000, but the reads for each and every replica is different. And we have considered the same for standard I. Now, keeping every other table under standard class, the cost was 84, and it was very much similar on the replica side as well, coming out to the cost of 32,000. When we change it to standard IA, the storage cost reduced from 61 to 2400 for 24 TB of data. Even though the read and write cost did increase with respect to standard class, the overall cost savings were really high with respect to standard IA. So we can see it's almost 3000 to 4000 savings per replica region, costing a total of 19,000 and hence the total savings per month is 12,000. Coming up a total savings per year being 153,000. This is a huge savings, right? So at this moment, we can see for this example, standard IA is saving so much dollars. In the future, if the throughput requirement increases, which is costing you a lot, you can try to check back and revert it back to standard class with just one click. My name is Anamika Keshavani. I'm a partner database specialist. I thank you for watching. See you next time. Thank you.